Hey everybody, Playtendo Guy here, and I'm back. Yes, I'm back with a brand new video. It's been quite a while. And you know what time it is? It's time for a definitely not a weekly pickups video, but a massive pickups video with loads of stuff that I've picked up over the past month or so. There's quite a lot to get through, so I'm going to probably do two or three parts to this. This is the first part. There's a selection of games and a selection of movies to go through. Quite a bit to get through, so without further ado, let's get into it. So, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Seems a bit weird actually standing in front of a camera now and doing one of these because it's been a little while since I've done a video and it feels great to be back doing a video talking about movies and games. And yeah, I have picked up quite a fair bit over the past few months, 4K, Blu-rays and video games. And there's a lot to get through. Um, I just picked up a massive stack here and I thought, yeah, let's show this one off. There's another couple of stacks over there, which I'll probably do in a part two or three as well. So there's a lot to get through. So more than enough, enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. And first up is the games. There are three of them. First up is a Switch game and it's Sonic Origins Plus. This originally came out as a digital only title last year and I didn't pick it up because I don't like buying digital games. So... I wait for the physical one. This one comes with a load of extra bonus games, but unfortunately the games are a bit crap, the bonus ones, and also they're digital codes, so they're not all on the cartridge. This is a really nice little deluxe physical edition. You get the game as well as like a big booklet, and then this awesome looking slipcover as well. Sonic Origins Plus is a collection of all the original four Sonic games, Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, as well as Sonic CD, which I never actually played before. So it was nice to play that one for the first time. Fun little collection. Definitely the games that I've played time and time again. But a very nice little collection. And again, this wasn't too badly priced. This was only 20 quid. So that's Sonic Origins Plus. This one came out late last year and kind of was a flop. Which is surprising considering it's a Marvel game. But yeah, it came and went like a fart in the wind. And that was Marvel Midnight Sun. And it's still sealed. This one's developed by XCOM developer Fraxis. I still haven't played it, as you can see it's still sealed. This one was 20 quid and it's supposed to be a strategy game, but with the Marvel superheroes. Looks really good and I'm looking forward to playing it. I've heard it's quite a lengthy game with a really good story. Spider-Man's in it, Wolverine, Iron Man I think is as well. So good selection of heroes. That is Marvel's Midnight Sun. A thing that arrived literally just the other day, or yesterday as time of filming this, is a game I've already got on PS4. I remember playing it when it came out, and I decided, I've i been wanting to get it for PS5 for ages, just to see what it's like, and I decided to pick it up as it's the 10th anniversary, and that is Grand Theft Auto V. Yes, the game that will not die already. It's 10 years old this year. It's been milked to death with the amount of additions that's come out of it, and it's the highest grossing entertainment property of all time. Made more money than any film, game, anything. It's quite shocking, and it still keeps selling gangbusters to this day. I remember playing it on the PS4, really enjoying it, and I want to go back and see what the PS5 version adds to it. I think it's quite a minimal upgrade and probably just runs at 60 frames per second, but gives me a chance to revisit one of the most influential and popular video games of all time. Now Rockstar, give us GTA 6. Now for what you're all here for, and that is the films, and I picked up quite a few. One of them is quite a big new release that came out a few weeks ago, and I remember seeing this a few weeks ago prior when it was on streaming and really enjoyed it which is no surprise as I'm a big gamer and this is the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, made by Illumination Studios this was just a joy to watch it's definitely not the most taxing of films and it feels like a sugar rush more than anything but it's beautifully animated captures the games perfectly and I just can't 
help but had a good time with it and I had a huge smile on my face. Definitely would like a bit more uh, bigger and more out there with a sequel and considering this made over a billion in the box office a sequel is pretty much guaranteed. Haven't actually checked out the Blu-ray yet you do get over 55 minutes of special features so looking forward to re-watching this film. It was actually one of my favourites of the year. Continuing the video game adaptation line is another one that came out this year but it was a TV series and it's honestly one of the best TV series I've seen by based on one of the best video games ever made and that's The Last of Us. This originally came out at the start of the year I watched it and thoroughly enjoyed it and been watching it again on Blu-ray and the picture quality is absolutely immense it's easily one of the best TV uh, series of the past few years. Fantastic storytelling, a brilliant adaptation and faithful adaptation to the game. That does a few things differently compared to uh, the game, but I can understand why and it all works out in the end. Pedro Pascal is absolutely fantastic as Joel. And whilst I wasn't too keen on the girl who played Ellie at first, she certainly did came into her own near in the end. This was a massive hit for HBO and no surprise a second season is coming but due to the writers strike it will probably be a good two or three years off and that's going to be interesting when they release the second season especially if it follows the events of the second game. I can imagine quite a few people being very angry but this is The Last of Us season one and you do get four discs I think with this one or yeah you do get four discs so you get one two, three, and four, as well as an episode guide. So I haven't actually checked out none of the special features yet, so I'll once I've finished watching the 10th episode, I will watch all the special features. So that's The Last of Us. Next up is a collection of films that I all picked up on Prime Day. So yeah, that was quite a while ago. Uh, five titles that I've been wanting to get for a while, and I have seen a few of them. I've dropped them all. Next up is a collection of five films that I picked up from the Amazon Prime Day sale, which, wow, must have been about two months ago. So, yeah, these went down to stupidly quite cheap price, about five or each, so I decided to pick them up. First up is a Jean-Claude Van Damme film, and that is Hard Target. Never saw this film before and watched it for a few months ago. Absolutely adored it. Probably my favourite Van Damme film. Brilliant action. It's a John Woo film and it has always different touches in it, like the birds flying and the slow mo. It is really good. I think it is his first ever American film and may actually be my favourite John Woo film. It's also got uh, the guy who plays Imhotep from The Mummy in here, as well as the brilliant Lance Henriksen, who's always fantastic in everything he does. It's a very brisk 90 minutes and it's such a fun time. It did recently get a 4K, but I decided just to go for the normal Blu-ray. And honestly, the Blu-ray looks really nice, so that's our target. Next up is a film starring Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster and James Garner. I mainly picked it up because it was a Richard Donner film, and that's Maverick. Now, I think Richard Donner is probably one of the most influential like directors of all time. He's done some fantastic stuff from Superman to The Omen to the Lethal Weapon franchise. Yes, he even did The Goonies, even though I'm not the biggest fan of that one. I know that film has its fans. And this one came out in the 90s haven't seen this film before and I think it is based on an old TV series called Mavericks starring James Garner so I'm intrigued to check this one out and I've heard there's quite a good little um, cameo by Danny Glover in this as well so look forward to checking it out so that's Maverick. Next up is a Tony Scott film I think I have seen this one many years ago but again real big fan of Tony Scott think he's a really underrated director Whilst um, his brother Tony made some of the most impressive, important films of all time, I think Tony made some of the most enjoyable, like proper popcorn films of all time. And this one is no different. Stan Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans is uh, The Last Boy Scout. If I remember correctly, Halle Berry's in this one in a small role, I think. It's been a while since I've seen this film, 
but I remember enjoying it, so I'm looking forward to re-watching this. Fortunately, you do not get no special features with this, it's just a movie, but for £5, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's The Last Boy Scout. Next up, we have another Mal Gibson film, and this one has both the theatrical and the director's cut, and that's Payback, which is apparently a remake of Point Blank, I think, with it's Point Blank, it's not Point Break, it's Point Blank with Lee Marvin, which I have seen before, and that's a, quite a quality little thriller. Apparently, the director's cut and the theatrical cut are two totally different films, one's more violent than the other, so probably will have to watch both the films to see which cut is the best. But the film is quite short at just 90 minutes, so it's not too bad. I think this one came out in the late 90s, because Mel looks a little bit older here. You do get quite a few special features in this one here, as it's all listed there. So if you've seen Payback before, tell me in the comment sections down below which version of the film should I watch, the theatrical or the director's cut. So that's Payback. And the final film out of the Prime Day sales is a film starring Tom Cruise. I have seen this one before. Timothy Spall's in it as well. It's a really good film. And that is The Last Samurai. I remember watching this one years ago on TV. It's quite a long film at about nearly two and a half hours long. And I think when I watched it on TV, it was like well over three hours. Very good film. Such an epic grand scale. So I'm looking forward to checking out the Blu-ray of it and giving it a proper rewatch without the intrusion of adverts. This one actually does have a load of special features as well, so it's quite a packed little release. So that is The Last Samurai. Next up, we have an Arrow 4K box set. This is the penultimate uh, film I have in my pile here. And um, yeah, I've been wanting to watch this one for a little while. It's such a definitely a weird premise. That's what kind of put me off getting it. But then when I heard that the limited edition set was going out of print, I snapped it up. And that's the David Cronenberg film, and that's The Naked Lunch. Starring uh, Peter Weller from Robocop. I think Roy Schneider's in it as well. And a few other notable actors. Don't really know too much about this one. I think this is about like a pest control guy who gets high on like the pesticides and see like real like these creatures wherever he lives. And I think he murders his wife. It sounds like a bizarre premise. The trailer looks totally Cronenberg-like. Sign me up. I've heard mixed things from it. Some people love it. Some people say it's a bit too out there. But I'm looking forward to giving it a shot. And I can imagine the 4K will look really nice. This artwork here looks absolutely fantastic. As you can tell, it's an absolute stacked release. As typical from Arrow. I think you get like two cuts of the film. And loads of special features. Another Blu-ray one, you get two discs. But all the special features are just on one disc. You get a booklet, your poster, your art cards, and a few little like uh, MacGubbins that they do show in the film, like a memorabilia, like uh, business cards and that. So it's quite a nice stacked little release. I think this is well out of print now because they've released the standard edition, but if you can still find this going for quite cheap, definitely recommend picking it up. I think I got it off Amazon for about 15 or 20 quid, so that's The Naked Lunch. And the final film of this haul is an 88 Films film that I picked up during one of their sales that they did in the summer. They reduced a load of them to like 9 99 and I think they did a little bit later on to 15 which I did pick some up, and you'll see some in the next haul video. But this one stars Charles Bronson and Telly, who loves your Savalas, in Violent City. This is on the Italian collection, and I think this is like two cuts of the film you get the Italian version and the American one I think it's called Mafia Family the American version also it also stars um, Charles Bronson's wife uh, Jill Ireland as well she's in a lot of his films so that isn't really no surprise it's quite a nice limited edition with a slip cover I remember looking for this in H&B and couldn't find it without a slip so no slip no deal for me I know but they look really quite nice I know the slip doesn't make the film that's a nice little extra, and when I know that you can get it about, and it's still moderately available, I will try and get it with a slipcover. But I ordered it from Amazon, it was about a tenner, so it wasn't too bad. You get two discs, alternative artwork, so you get Violent City, and you get The Family. And interestingly enough, both the releases are from Kino Lorber, if you can see there. 
And I don't think we actually had Kino Rolba titles over here, they're only in America, so I can imagine that the transfer on these are really good, because I've heard nothing but positive things about their 4K releases. You also do get quite a nice little booklet here, going through like information about films and still from the films. And you also do get a poster as well. So that is Violent City. So if you've seen this one, tell me what you think and which cut of the film I should watch. I should probably think Violent City is the one to watch as it's the title on the slipcover. But nevertheless, thank you ever so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me what you think of my pickups in the comments section down below. It'd be great to chat to you. It's been a while since I've replied to some comments, so I do apologise that I haven't replied to older comments from a month or two ago. But I promise that I'll get back to every single one of you on this video, and it'll be great to chat to you about films. Tell me what you picked up in the comments section down below, and again, let's have a chat and talk about our love of movies and video games. So thanks ever so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. You stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.